itself and nothing else. Light flashed up in the room upon the instant and the curtains of his bed were drawn. The curtains of his bed were drawn aside, I tell you, by a hand. Scrooge found himself face to face with a strange figure. Like a child, yet not so like a child. It's like an old man diminished to a child's proportions. Its hair, which hung about its neck and down its back, was white as if with age. And yet the face had not a wrinkle in it. And the tenderest bloom was on its skin. It held a branch of fresh green holly in its hand, yet its dress was trimmed with summer flowers. But the strangest thing about it was from the crown of its head there sprung a bright, clear jet of light by which all this was visible. Are you the spirit, sir, whose coming was foretold me? I am. But who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Uh, what business brings you here? Your welfare. Rise and walk with me. The grasp, though gentle as a woman's hand, was not to be resisted. He rose, but finding that the spirit made towards the window, clasped its robe in supplication. Oh, I am mortal and liable to fall. There, by the touch of my hand, there. And you shall be upheld in more than this. As the words were spoken, they passed through the wall. <laughs> entirely vanished along with the darkness and the mist it was a clear cold winter day and they stood upon a country road with snowy fields on either side and Scrooge was conscious of a thousand odors floating in the air each one connected with a thousand thoughts and hopes and joys and cares long long forgotten <laughs> 